In the interest of time, this video has been sped up a little bit, and we're going to go through the value structure of a sphere. The first step, once you've located where the shadows are, is just to cover all of the areas of shadow indiscriminately with a tone. And you'll notice here that I've just gone right over any edges without discriminating uh, any kind of difference in value between the cast shadow, the shadow core, or just the generic shadow side. The next stage is to go into the shadow core and differentiate it from this postered out shadow. And you'll see that I'm doing that now. So the shadow core is where the light hits at a tangent and creates a very a relatively dark band along the shadow side. One of the rules of thumb is that um, at this stage, you only need to differentiate shadow tone. You don't have to have the exact correct shadow tone. So there I've gone into the cast shadow and differentiated the cast shadow from the sphere itself. Generally speaking, you want to go over the edges just a little bit. The next stage is to kind of ground the object. And I do that by creating a very dark shadow under the object itself. And this stage looks slightly two-dimensional. Another thing that I can do is I can find where my highlight is, and I did that with the eraser. This time an eraser tool digitally, but for you, it could be an actual eraser. So every time you make a little pass through this, you kind of deepen the value just a little bit. And through multiple passes over the object, you begin to work into the idea of local value where the sphere itself begins to look accurately uh, dark. So what happens with a sphere is that you have a continuous plane change in all directions of the sphere. So that means that your value has to change smoothly all the way around the sphere itself. You can't have jagged edges within the, within the boundaries of the sphere. And so it takes a little bit of work and a little bit of patience to create those kinds of transitions. And you'll notice that when you darken up the light side of the sphere and begin to create a sense of local value, like the like it might be a light gray ball or something like that, that you then have to go back and darken everything again. And this is what we call pushing the values back and forth. You'll notice that what's happening is that I'm getting a sense of reflected light on the sphere itself and that light seems to be bouncing off of the off of the table surface and back onto the ball and that's one of the quickest ways to create a convincing dimensional rounded object and you'll notice here that i'm coming back and i'm dealing with the edges just a little bit and this stage is called binding and that's where i don't have to heavily outline everything but i can use a little bit of contour and a little bit of outline to help emphasize what it is that I'm doing with the value. And I don't want to do anything to destroy all of the value structure and dimension that I've built up already. You'll notice that there was a little bit of a fuzzy outline around the sphere. So I've gone in and worked into the background to kind of deal with that fuzzy outline in the binding stage. And that kind of helps this along. 